Welcome back to the Frank Cho Crypto Show. I want to take a look this weekend at a new piece in Forbes called The SEC Spin Doctors Are Trying to Hide Their Crypto Regulation Disaster. This new piece from Rosalind Layton takes a deeper dive into what's been happening with the SEC and their multiple failures from FTX to Ripple and certainly others that we've taken note of over the last couple of years. And then finally, I want to turn back to Jim Cramer, who has suddenly become super pro SEC when it comes to regulating the crypto space and weeding out bad actors after the recent statement that was made by multiple government agencies this week, he's calling for even more action, and we'll take a deeper dive into that. But if we haven't met before, my name's Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. All right, let's take a dive into Forbes. Now, we've looked at basically every piece Miss Layton's put out over the last two years because of her great coverage of what's happened in the SEC versus Ripple case, the SEC's actions in particular or inaction that's caused harm to crypto markets, and now she has a new piece here, SEC Spin Doctors Trying to Hide Crypto Regulation Disaster. So over the last two administrations, the U.S. SEC has promoted an all-encompassing policy of regulation by enforcement for U.S.-based digital asset markets like Coinbase and the interchain or enterprise blockchain industry that develops fintech solutions like Ethereum, Ripple, Stellar, and Circle. Two successive chairmen, Jay Clayton and Gary Gensler, said that every digital asset except Bitcoin is a security and should register at the SEC like a stock. The details in there unless you end up on the wrong side of an SEC lawsuit. It seems like regulation by enforcement is the primary tool in the SEC's arsenal as they try and go after crypto firms, intimidation tactics, threats, and again, coming after firms that are trying to do the right thing while frauds continue to be perpetrated and aren't caught until after the fact. Now, diving back in, she writes, the SEC banks on a quick settlement from the parties it charges. Parties which dare to challenge the SEC need financial reserves, superstar lawyers, and years of patience for litigation to play out in court. This enforcement produces little clarity for the market or protection of investors, which is the ostensible point of the regulatory exercise. With FTX, the SEC claimed their approach would protect investors, but it didn't work out for FTX. A series of regulatory mishaps and wealth-destroying events created the current crypto winter. SEC Chair Gensler claims that FTX, all other digital crypto assets, are out of compliance and their innovators need to come in and register at the SEC. Presumably, paper and physical presence at the SEC are just the ticket. In any event, the SEC has not published such registration forms, guidelines, procedures, or instructions, nor any theory of how such regulatory deterrence will protect investors. Sheila Warren, the head of the Crypto Council for Innovation, observed correctly that the FTX case is not about crypto per se, but wrongdoers. Sam Bankman-Fried and his conspirators are being duly charged on multiple charges for fraud, wire fraud, theft, and money laundering by the Department of Justice, in addition to the SEC complaint and another for campaign fi finance violation. This shows that already crypto is subject to a variety of regulations and laws, notes Warren. In fact, there are already multiple regulators which assert jurisdiction over crypto. Gensler's scapegoating of the whole industry likely is a distraction from the many meetings he and his inner circle had with FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried and how close SBF got to the regulatory pass he wanted before the fraud emerged right under the SEC's nose. Again, you have a major fraud perpetrated. You have the Department of Justice coming after fraud, wire fraud, campaign finance violations, and others in the case of FTX. Yet, Sam Bankman-Fried was the one who was granted meetings and having discussions, not just with the SEC, but also with key policymakers in D.C., 
But meanwhile, we look at the SEC versus Ripple case where Ripple was trying to be compliant, trying to abide by the rules, and yet they were targeted by the SEC. FTX wasn't the only big event in crypto at year's end that launched the SEC's spin machine. The cryptocurrency trial of the century, the SEC versus Ripple, reached their final arguments after two grueling years in the Southern District of New York. The lawsuit over the San Francisco-based enterprise blockchain company sales and distributions of the XRP token is a flagship case for the SEC's regulation by enforcement policy on crypto. It was obvious when the SEC filed the case or when Clayton's SEC filed the case on his last day in office, that it was a gamble for a quick settlement. The SEC made sweeping arguments about the token itself being a security for seven years and included Ripple Chair Chris Larson and CEO Brad Garlinghouse as defendants. In retrospect, it seemed tactical saber-rattling to terrorize the company's two top officials into a settlement, isolate the company in court, and shame it into surrendering. But Ripple fought back, tore apart the SEC's legal theories, and drew vigorous support from over 75,000 XRP holders and many of the industry's leading associations, legal experts, and companies. It was curious, therefore, when Charles Gasparino of Fox Business tweeted some exclusive reporting on an autopsy of the Ripple case unfolding at the SEC. Gasparino and Eleanor Terrett reported on the conflicts of interest among Clayton and his now-departed staff. So earlier this week, Gasparino tweeted, It's worth asking why the SEC did focus on XRP and Ripple. Noting that agency sources claim Ripple management was so-called flouting their authority by continuing to sell XRP after being on notice to stop because the way it was being sold seemed to establish its designation as a security. Ripple never received any notice to stop selling XRP from the SEC. No letters or official warnings were published or issued that have shown up on the case docket. And after two years, you would certainly expect them to have shown up at this point. Continuing, she writes, while Ripple's sales seem to make XRP a security to one official, a trove of internal emails and documents that the SEC fought for more than a year to hide from the judge show a muddy internal picture. What does compliance mean for Ripple or any market participant in such a cloud of confusion? Gasparino attempts to capture verbatim the mind-bending SEC gobbledygook on the issue, but no conversational workarounds can hide the SEC's failed destructive policy of regulation by enforcement. And this we've seen play out over the years that the SEC has tried to warm its way in to the crypto space. Regulation by enforcement, a lack of clarity, and total confusion. But that doesn't mean the SEC isn't without their supporters. Jim Cramer says he expects the SEC to do a roundup of uncompliant crypto firms and now urges investors to get out of crypto. The host of CNBC's Mad Money Show is back with more warnings for crypto investors. Of course, we know he's a former hedge fund manager and founded The Street.com, a so-called financial news and literacy website. Following the joint statement we looked at earlier this week from the Fed, the FDIC, and the OCC, Kramer said... I think these statements are the beginning of what I've been calling for, which is that the SEC is going to do a roundup of all the ones, all the crypto firms, that is, who are not compliant. Citing John Stark, who served as an attorney for over 18 years in the SEC's enforcement division, Kramer stressed that Stark is now calling for a sweep. He emphasized, he said the SEC is going to sweep everything, which is why I'm telling everybody, get out of these. I see a lot of people feel, like Stark, that it's just a giant scam. He added that he expects former FTX CEO SBF to be material to the SBF or the SEC roundup. I'm not calling for a crypto collapse, he says. I'm calling for a collapse of the people in on the Ponzi scheme. Despite the warning signs, Kramer explained that people are bidding the prices of cryptocurrencies up. He proceeded to warn investors to get their money out while they can. If you recall, though, Kramer used to invest in Bitcoin, Ether, NFTs, and more, but sold all his holdings last year. He's been advising investors to avoid investing in speculative assets, including crypto, while the Fed continues to tighten the economy. What do you think? Does Jim Cramer have a point here, or is he just doing what he does, trying to capture headlines? We've seen the advent of an 
a reverse or inverse Kramer ETF as he's had a number of bad calls and that has actually performed uh, rather well. So let me know what you think in the comments below about Kramer and of course about the SEC trying to spin their way out of their terrible regulation by enforcement activities. As always, I'm curious to know what you're thinking. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, drop a like, it helps the channel a ton and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on the latest news and updates. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day and weekend, and I will see you in the next one.